Hey guys, today we're doing chapter 11, section 6, which is on factoring quadratic trinomials and related polynomials. So whenever you have some sort of quadratic polynomial, you can always, always, always find the zeros or roots using the quadratic formula. So remember the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And you can always, always, always use that on a quadratic. So if you get stuck and you're not sure how to factor it or maybe you can't graph it or you don't know where to go, you can always use the quadratic formula to fall back on. So remember that when you're using the quadratic formula, a, b, and c are the coefficients of your terms in standard form. So a is the coefficient of your x squared term, b is the coefficient of your x term, and c is your constant. So let's just do an example of this. Let's factor x squared plus x minus 2162. And we're going to do this using the quadratic formula. So this is already in standard form. So my a value is 1 because that's the coefficient of my x squared. My b value is 1 because that's the coefficient of my x. And my c value is negative 2162. So now I'm going to plug this into the quadratic formula. And I'm going to say negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. Okay? So this is 1 squared. This is 4 times 2162. Um, and that will be plus 1. So this gives me negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 8649 over 2. Now the square root of 8649 is 93, so this is negative 1 plus or minus 93 over 2. So if I do negative 1 minus 93, that's negative 94 divided by 2 gives me negative 47. And if I do plus, I have negative 1 plus 93, which is 92 divided by 2 gives me 46. So those are my two possible solutions. So now if I want to factor this, remember that these are my zeros. If I want to write it as factors, I need to have x minus r using my factor theorem. So I'm going to rewrite this as x plus 47, x minus 46. And that is the factored form of this polynomial. So you could have done this using our x game method. But you'll notice that 46 and 47 might have been some kind of hard numbers to come up with. So sometimes it's easier to start at the uh, um, quadratic formula. You know, it just kind of depends on what you like. For this next problem, the quadratic formula will work, but it's not the easiest method. So x squared minus 5. First of all, I'm going to show you what the easiest method is for this problem. Whenever you have something that just has an x squared term and a constant, remember that what we're doing is we're setting that equal to 0 and solving. So essentially, this is the same thing as x squared equals 5. And if you have x squared equals 5, you can just take the square root of both sides. Remember that the square root of a square is the absolute value. So you have the absolute value of x equals the square root of 5. And remember that absolute value means that it could be positive or negative, so we need to split this up into the positive and negatives. So it would be x equals the square root of 5, or x equals negative square root of 5. So that means that if I'm going to factor this and rewrite this as factors, which, by the way, for a problem like this, you cannot do using our x game. Okay, this you have to use um, either this method or the quadratic formula. So to rewrite this, this would be x minus the square root of 5, x plus the square root of 5. This would be the factored form of this equation. Okay, and of course you could have done that using the quadratic formula as well. Alright, for this next problem, the only method you can use is the quadratic formula. So the only thing that will work is the quadratic formula. And the reason the quadratic formula is so nice is because it always works. You can always fall back on the quadratic formula. So explain how to factor x squared plus x plus 1. Well, first of all, I'm going to list out my a, b, and c values. They're all 1. Okay. 
So now I'm going to plug that into my quadratic formula. Negative 1 plus or minus radical 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 over 2 times 1. Okay, so to simplify this, this is 1 minus 4, so in here will be negative 3. So I've got negative 1 plus or minus square root of negative 3 over 2. Uh-oh, I've got a negative underneath my radical sign, so that means that this is going to be imaginary numbers. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, these are my roots. So my roots are negative 1 half plus i square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half minus i square root of 3 over 2. So explain how to factor this. Well, I would just find the zeros and then rewrite them as factors. And I know this is going to look really nasty, but this is how you actually write it. So remember that you want to write this as uh, x minus r, where r is your zero. So this is going to be x minus negative 1 half plus i square root 3 over 2. And x minus negative one half uh, minus i square root three over two. Okay, so that's how you would rewrite this as factors, and I know that's kind of icky, and then you just simplify it down a little bit, but we're not even going to worry about that because this was just asking us to explain how to do it. So how to do it, well, you start with the quadratic formula, you find your zeros, and then you rewrite your zeros as factors, just like you would do with any other type of equation. The only difference is that in this one, we have imaginary numbers. All right, that is everything for section six.